All right. Thanks, Maria. You're all set to go. I'm all set to go. Wonderful. I'm going to do roll call. So when Sunita does our wonderful minutes taking, she knows who's here. Carly. Here. Jing. Sunita. Here. Jamie. Here. Misty. Sophie. Here. Martha. Here. John. Here. Beverly. Bev is here. I see her. Beverly, yeah. I see Might her. Might be on mute, but she's here. Okay, she's here. Beverly's here. Alexis. She's here. 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 Thank you. Susan. Here. Thank you. And Suzanne. Okay. Did I, did I, I think I got everybody. Yes. Okie dokie. So we're going to have a visitor comment period. So welcome back, Ramona. Thank That's you. Here. Anything you'd like to share with us this morning, this afternoon? Well, um, Viva Village is uh, beginning the re-establishment of some of our activities as well. Uh, everybody's looking forward to getting back to whatever the new norm is. Yeah. So. Uh, so what kinds, can you list some of the things that you're doing now that you hadn't been doing? Well, we have, uh, we're going to be reinstituting our dine around group beginning in September for the members and the volunteers, where we go to lunch once a month at different restaurants in the area and meet and eat. And uh, that's real popular. And we have, um, we're looking forward to uh, having our annual Aging with Grace program um, at the end of October, uh, where the public is invited as well. And we have a, several speakers who talk about issues pertinent to aging, mm -hmm. the aging population. And so that will be coming up October the 30th. So uh, we're working towards that goal as well as uh, what the BCOA is doing with uh, recognizing the older adults in the population of the celebration on October the 1st that uh, is being worked on in connection with uh, some of the partners at the library and the county. Yeah, great, so. thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, we're always glad thank to have you. So now we're going to review our um, June minutes, any additions, fixes or so, and so forth. I'll just note that I saw Misty pop in also. So welcome oh, Misty. That's right, there's an M. Hi Misty. Hi everyone. Good to see you and hear you. <laughs> so Sunita, Misty is here. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so reviewing our June minutes, any addendums or changes? Okay, uh, a vote to approve the meeting minutes of June. I so move. Thank you, Beverly, a second? A second. Okay. Thank you, Sophie and Susan. Our minutes have now been approved. And oh, we got a vote on that. Oh, okay. Let's take a vote on approving the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, details. <laughs> okay. Um, now we're going to take a few minutes to share subcommittee updates. So we have two subcommittees the BCOA Liaison Education and Speaker Committee, and then the Subcommittee on Honoring Older Citizens. So who would like to go first? Is this to uh, give the update on what we did last when we yeah. met after? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, we met, okay, this is the uh, BCOA Liaison Education and Speaker Committee, Subcommittee. 
Um, and the members of that committee are Sunita, Paul, John, and Bev. And we shared information about each of our interests and what they envisioned future actions could be. Uh, it became apparent that the members have existing knowledge, interest, or already contact involvement with many groups that impact the over 55 age population. The referenced groups either have a significant advocacy interest in or implement decision-making actions related to BCOA's target population. We discussed how connecting with these groups would educate BCOA and identify excellent resources for speakers in events for the full committee to review. It was agreed that each of us would identify several groups that we should develop a liaison with for our next meeting. We also discussed developing a directory of these groups to have as a centralized resource. And we welcome other BCOA members advising us of advocacy or decision-making groups they think we should be aware of and possibly contact. Wonderful, thank you. Well done, that sounds very exciting. And uh, update on the subcommittee for honoring older citizens. Hit it, Sophie. <laughs> I can give you a little update. So um, I took some notes. I sent those to Carly today, so they may not have made it in the minutes. Sorry about that. Um, however, um, it looks like, okay. We decided we're going to interview local elderly, um, people who live in the area. Um, we talked about having qualifications for who can win the award that's happening in October. We haven't decided what those qualifications will look like, but we decided we will need some prerequisites for the candidates that um, we will end up spotlighting. Um, we talked about interviewing um, someone who's lived in Beaverton for many years as a potential prerequisite maybe having a campaign for people who um, would like to be interviewed in our newsletter website. Um, we also had kind of briefly talked about, you know, collaborating with Viva Village. And I think also Death Cafe was mentioned as well. Um, we talked about interview questions for the history of Beaverton and what has changed over the past couple of years. We wanted to use some quotes from our interview um, with the elders of the community to add to the website with their faces maybe. And then also on our, so put the elder spotlight on the website and then on the newsletter. And then one question we might ask is what kind of legacy would they leave? Does that sound good? <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you so much for taking notes. And um, any other additions to either somebody? Yeah, this is John. Um, I sat in on the uh, Bicycle Advisory Committee meeting last Thursday. Um, I, and it was kind of funny. I was, we were having lunch and our kind of a, a mid -snap, afternoon snack. And I looked up and to try, try and see when their meeting was and found out it had just started. <laughs> so I signed in and listened to probably about a little over an hour of their meeting. Um, and had some input on it too. Um, they talked about the Pedal Palooza West Side uh, ride that they're going to have. Then they went into a discussion of the uh, active transportation plan by uh, Gene Biggs, uh, staff liaison. And that discussion took quite a while because they were talking about the plans for downtown and for improving sidewalks. Um, and this impacts the, the aging community, obviously. Uh, so that is ongoing. Uh, they've made a lot of work on it since February of 19 or 2018 um, on the active transportation plan. And then they talked about, uh, uh, Gene Biggs talked to get a, a little bit more about the major roads transportation improvement pro program that they're, they're working on. And, Obviously, that has uh, implications for uh, aging adults in Beaverton, too. So overall, it was good. I introduced myself as a prior member, 
they are going to resubmit their application for gold status for um, the League of American Bicyclists for the city of Beaverton. Uh, we established ourselves as uh, bronze a long time ago and I wrote an application for silver and we were approved as a silver bicycle uh, friendly community uh, here in Beaverton a few years back and we're gonna try and get to the gold status. And I told them I wrote the application so I'll, I'll try and help them with the gold uh, application too. So there is some definite um, overlap between this committee and the Bicycle Advisory Committee. I've seen a lot of older adults on our bike paths um, with this COVID shutdown, um, bicycling around town and enjoying themselves in the, the rain and the sun. So. <laughs> Thank you, John. That was good timing. Yeah, <laughs> it was lucky. <laughs> a meet, meet and lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, thank you so much. Any other additions? I just have one follow-up um, that, and that is, I was, uh, my interest was trying to make a connection with the federal government committees who are working on issues around aging. And I finally, I did hear, it was hard to get in contact with them as you are all aware of. Uh, but anyhow, I did get a contact back from, um, Senator Wyden's office and gave me some numbers. Right now, there is just a special committee on aging to deal with some specific issues, a lot of it employment. And, uh, but I will make contact with them and hopefully can contact them uh, and find out what they are doing and then find out what other committees actually deal with aging as a specific issue. Oh. That's the update. And just for people's information, C-SPAN puts out this marvelous book each, um, well, every other year when elections are held for um, the senators and representatives. It is a marvelous directory. Does cost, but I'll tell you, it has everybody in there and all of the committees as well. So, so that where, where do you order? Do you order that from somewhere? I go to C-SPAN online. Okay. They actually have a store that they sell products in. Of course. And this is called the, what I have is a 2021 U.S. Congressional Directory. Okay. Thank you. And so does, I think somebody had an update about Elsie Stirr. I don't know whether who it was. Well, you had contacted me, Martha. Yeah. They are, um, and then you got, I can't, I don't know who the person is that also contacted you. Uh, Jamie and you, and I wasn't sure who would like to share what they. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I, Jamie, you want to update? The only update I received is they're not opening until I think um, end of September. Oh, now it's the end of September. Yeah, uh, oh. I, I do feel that there is information yet to come out that may impact the opening. And that is, um, and you're hearing more and more about the breakthrough cases that are occurring. Um, and the state does a, um, reports the data on a monthly basis. And I believe it is the fourth Thursday of each month. I don't have the information from June yet, but in May, I know that there were uh, 400 breakthrough cases and four deaths of those 400. Um, more and more is becoming available out of need uh, for a family member who has a very suppressed immune system uh, I work with the doctors to find out, hey, are we to wear our masks? And actually, both of us are to wear it, that the aging population and those with um, suppressed immune systems or are in treatment like cancer, they have transplants, those people evidently are being recommended to wear, continue to wear masks because we are at higher risk. My question is, I wonder 
how or when, if more information comes out about this, if we are only if we are going to find out that for certain populations, the Elsie Stewart population specifically, whether they're going to hold off um, opening that facility up totally, or whether they might do some scheduling of X number of people per class, that type of thing. I would not be surprised. And as we all know, this is, this is um, a very new thing. We're finding out this is a learning situation all the way through it. And um, so yes, at first it was the first of September and then the last of September. And so who knows? Who knows? And Bev, I'm assuming that when you talk about breakthrough cases, these are people who have been vaccinated and have caught COVID and- Right, they, the right. These are fully vaccinated people who have, for where or how they don't know, um, have contracted COVID. Okay. Now, the majority of them are not hospitalized. Okay, that's important to note too. Uh, however, it's going to be an individual basis again of whether you are or aren't. And it appears that, yeah, even that population um, can die. Okay. So I'm sure that more concern will be given this topic. And the doctors are really on it. I have one doctor who is uh, going to contact me monthly to give me an update. Oh, wonderful. So you can keep us abreast of, yeah. of that, that data. Yeah, the data is really important to, to yeah. be aware of. Yeah, our new normal, you don't yeah. know what it's going to look like quite yet, even yeah. though many of us are very uh, looking forward to getting back to Elsie Stir. It looks like we're going to have to wait some more, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. OK, great. Anything else, John? Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, I've, I've done a lot of work in industrial hygiene with masks and respiratory protection in my career. Mm -hmm. And the masks that we're talking about, the cloth masks, are meant to protect others from you. They don't do a real good job of protecting you from others. Okay, they're maybe 40 to 60% effective, not the 95 or 99% effective of an N95 mask. Um, the N95 masks have two straps yeah. and they, they seal completely around your nose and mouth. So they do protect you very, very well. But a lot of people don't know how to wear them and are wearing them inappropriately with maybe one strap or um, without pushing the nose piece down so that it really creates a seal around the nose. Yeah. Well, I think we start with taking care of ourselves and, and uh, help others when they ask. <laughs> yeah. I guess is the best we can do. Thank you. OK, so any, any other updates of, around town? Well, we do have a death cafe coming up on this Friday at 11 o'clock and we are uh, on Zoom and, um, and then we have con continuing age cafes, which I will post those dates. I don't have my calendar open, but they're the second and the fourth Fridays of the month of July. And we're working on, we just talked about belonging and then we're going to do two other topics for this next month. What so time? There, I, I'll have to, I okay. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I will post them. I will send it all out for you. But they're very dynamic. They're wonderful conversations. And people are really sharing a lot. So we, oh, everybody walks away enriched. So I invite people to come. They're, they're just very engaging. And, and it's to embrace our aging because we're all aging, regardless yeah. of how old or young we are, we are all aging. We, we don't just all of a sudden reach an age and we go, oh, I'm, I'm aging. Eh, no, you've been aging all the way along. The, so, idea, the idea is to continue to age. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, gift, the gift we have is we're still here. 
you know. Martha, will you send the, that information out so that we can participate prior to the minutes coming out? I will. I will send it out later today or definitely tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you very much. You are so welcome. Okay, so. Martha, Harley. can I give a quick update? Is that okay? Harley's but, gonna do our update. Oh, well, yes. But before I do the staff liaison one, if I could just not be the staff liaison for just a, one I, second. Absolutely. <laughs> So I was just going to share with you all that, you know, in my other role, not as staff liaison, but as the program manager with the mediation work, <clears throat> we are hosting a series um, for the public on community dialogue. And it's about how to help. It's it's three part series in August, three, three hour sessions. And it's all in skill building on, on understanding how we think and like what the barriers are and how we don't why we end up in debates rather than actual dialogue. Martha actually was helping with the first series in um, July, so she can attest to it if, if she thinks. But I will say that it's it's been a really well received series. Um, the two trainers that are teaching it are really keep it dynamic and fun and lots of like breakout conversations and exercises. So it's not just like it's a workshop, not um, presentation. But if you're interested in that sort of thing, or you know folks who are, it's you know it's free to the community and um, and it's posted online. And I'm happy to share. It's three days in August. I I'll have to send you the dates. But um, but let me know if you're interested. I just wanted to let you know that we're offering that. I think it's the fifth, twelfth, and nineteenth. Fifth, twelfth, and nineteenth. There you go. Thursday. Is it virtual? Yes. Virtual. Okay. And will those recordings be available to um, people who are unable to attend? We're not recording those sessions. They're really interactive. And also it tends to be something where people share personal things. So we're yeah. not, um, and we, and part of it is that because it's so interactive and we encourage people strongly to be on camera, we kind of, we don't record them because we want people to more fully engage. But Lisa does send out the, um, um, the PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint. So you get with the pieces where she's giving, she and Ryan are giving out information. It's all on a PowerPoint and she does share that. And the topics are issues that, that we're dealing with um, locally or nationally. So you get to really think about uh, where you stand on an issue and how to ask questions and then how to state your view succinctly and directly so you're not saying the same thing over and over again, but being direct and um, uh, so the other person can actually hear you. So it's listening to, learning to listen and then expressing yourself to be heard. It's, and being curious. It's a great program. I really enjoyed it. So that was my non-staff liaison update on things that are going on. Um, and for, for staff liaison role, let me give you a few things here. I already mentioned one um, around the masks. Um, the other the masks, I think in case anybody wasn't there, that masks are no longer required in the city buildings. They're optional. Um, the other updates is that the budget's been approved. Um, and let's see here, um, there are reminders out to conserve water, as you probably are already aware of that, um, but, but it's, there's recommendations to reduce the outdoor water use um, and to water or in the early morning or late evening. And so there's a list on the website about tips on how to save water. And uh, let's see that the night market will be back um, and it's on going to be on First Street and Tucker Avenue Friday, August 13th and 14th. Um, so if you this 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 my really short updates there, but um, if you haven't been to the night market before, it's a great uh, event to be able to have a lot of different vendors and events going on. Um, so yeah, those are my very quick updates. And since we don't have our city council liaison today, here today, I don't have updates from her, but um, they have a very packed agenda for tonight. Mm -hmm. Sophie, did you have a question for me? Um, what are the streets of the night market? What's the cross street again? First and Tucker. Tucker, okay, thank you. 
And I just have one, um, I'm looking for a local artist who makes jewelry. Momi, who is the co-owner of the Burke House Coffee Shop, mm -hmm. is, wants to sell earrings in her coffee shop, but she's, she is all about local. So if anybody has any artisans who make jewelry, can you pass their information on to me and I will pass it on to Momi and she'll, she wants to start interviewing people and see what's a good fit. The other recommendation, Martha, I would say is if you have a chance tomorrow night is the Arts Commission's meeting. Um, oh, thank you. Is thank if you. you have time to pop into their meeting in the public comment period and ask them, they are a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> so you are right. that's tomorrow night. I totally forgot about them. Thank is it, is local meaning Beaverton or Vancouver, Washington mm. is okay or no? Well, you know what? Mommy has to make that decision. I, all I'm, I'm just her, I'm the messenger. I'm helping. I, because I knew somebody who lives in Vancouver, Washington, and she makes really good jewelry. And let so. pass me her name and, and contact number and I'll- I'll ask her first and then I'll yes. pass it on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I promise, the only person I will send the information to is Momi, and okay. then I I will discard the information. I will not be okay. anybody for any reason. Sure. You mean you're not going to be selling it, Martha? To <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not opening an online store. <laughs> the dark web. Yeah, the dark web. <laughs> I can't be like C-SPAN. <laughs> okay, great. Any other good for the order, or before we move on? Uh, I have a question, and that is of uh, Carly. Carly, are the um, uh, mediation um, classes face to face? It's all on Zoom still. It is still on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay, and can you send that out to us? Yes, and and in fact, you know, even though we don't use the chat a lot, I'm going to use it briefly here just so that for everybody's sake, I can put it in the chat where you can sign up. Um, and then um, I'll put it right now. And then we can put it in the minutes too, if you want. But um, just so you have it in this moment, I'll, you can see the information here. Thank Oops. you. Okay, you sorry, that was the wrong link, but I will do that right now. Okay. And so Sophie? Disregard that. I just had something quick to say, um, in case anyone's curious about senior living and how senior living is doing, um, we still do require masks in almost all the buildings in the Beaverton area, but the numbers have gone way down um, and we're not seeing our buildings in Beaverton with COVID. So that's really promising, um, really feels great because that's our population that we're really concerned about. Um, but if you do if you do want to visit a building, if you have a loved one there or something like that, please do bring your mask. It's not optional. Okay. Yeah, and remember, just because a building says mass not required, you, you get to decide how you want to wear your mask when you enter a building. So that that's up to you personally, which I think is really important for us to be aware of. Okie doke, we're going to split into our subcommittees. And Carly's going to divide us into two different rooms and a time to um, review and figure out what the next steps are. And then we'll come back and share what we've, what we've gleaned and put together. And that's the rest of our meeting. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I have everybody here. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign, unless there's any questions, I'll go ahead and open up the subcommittee rooms. Um, putting everybody where they were before. So <laughs> here we go. Welcome back everybody. Martha, um, we had a guest join us um, for this last portion of the meeting. Wonderful. Hi, Karen. And Paul is here. Wonderful, welcome, welcome, glad you're here. Okay, so we're going to um, have each group share a synopsis of what you covered and uh, your next tasks. So who would like to go first? Well, I'll go. 
Go, Bev. I don't like empty space, so. Okay. Uh, you okay. <laughs> our, our committee um, is a great committee. I will start by saying that. Um, we are very engaged and we enjoy sharing information. And we got so excited about an actual project that I'm going to present that first with a recommendation from our committee that we do this as an activity. And that is uh, with the library, what we learned from each other and a lot from, uh, from uh, several people is that the library offers more things to the 55 and over uh, age group than people realize. And so we propose that we have someone from the library and Sunita can make that contact and have them come and present to us the activities available that people do not know about. We would then like to have that printed up on a one sheet flyer that is inserted into the Beaverton City newsletter that will go to the most aging population that we can po probably get to and that we make sure people know about these projects because they're fantastic and the 55 and over population need to use them. So that is our first recommendation. And then for our committee, uh, we uh, each brought um, some recommendations and we are going to accept them. And that is uh, one is the federal government committees who are um, doing things uh, that affect the 55 and over population. And uh, we will also contact the Bicycle Advisory Committee, the Nature and Trails Committee. And then we will also contact the Age Plus, which is a nonprofit organization, the Jesse Richardson Foundation, the Stand for Children, Aspire and Avid, ARP, and Home Fit. And what we will do and bring back to the committee is to identify a small informational paragraph on each of these groups and how we see them being of benefit to our group to have an association with these organizations or groups. And awesome. we will bring that together for our minutes and uh, we will start to make contacts with people and identify contact people in these organizations as well. What might come out of that is that we may have people who we would recommend come and um, do presentations to the full committee. And that's our update. Awesome, that, congratulations. That is such good work. Ooh, so exciting. Well done. Okay, Sophie, would you like to share since you took such good notes? Yes, I can definitely share. So um, we all are really excited about honoring older adults. Um, we have a date for our first event, which is October 1, 2021. Um, the event is from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It'll be held at the Beaverton Public Library um, we're expecting between 30 and 40 people. Um, we talked about how are we going to declare the day? So we kind of talked about, is it the mayor? Is it the, the city manager? So it sounds like Ramona and Carly might be in communication about that. Um, and hopefully Ramona can help kind of tie up that, that end and be able to report how we can declare this person, um, the um, we'll honor this adult, this older adult on October 1. Um, Martha's going to reach out to Kevin Teeter. He manages um, the city. He does a lot of the work with the, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember how to say it. Association. Yes, okay. thank you. And so in, in regard to the food that's being served at this event, um, we were thinking that maybe we could partner with a local company who might sponsor the, the food, maybe prepackage it. Um, Actually, who's marketing the event and who we're partnering with as far as BCOA is Viva Village Age Cafe, the library and DAVs, um, which is super exciting. Um, 
There's some other details about RSVP, but basically we left the meeting that our subcommittee is going to email um, me a week from today, um, some ideas on what does it mean to them? Who qualifies for this award? And then the other way is how do we plan to honor them? So those two um, questions will be emailed to me um, a week from today. And I will be tasked with sending that to Carly um, and Martha so that it can be discussed at the board and voted on um, and just compiled at the end. Oh, Ramona? The day is supposed to be in honor of older adults in general, mm -hmm. yeah. rather than a specific older adult. So it, um, the proclamation will be for older and adults within the city of Beaverton. And I thought that was going to be our emphasis this year was the general idea of honoring all older adults rather than, uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding <clears throat> Sophie when you said honoring this specific adult. <laughs> um, I just wanted to clarify what I thought we're driving at as far as our efforts. You're absolutely correct, Ramona. This first one is to honor older adults. We're getting, we're trying to stay moving forward for mm -hmm. our next event. Yeah, in next year. Mm -hmm. uh, to, no, yeah, what, 2022, mm -hmm. that we would, we're trying to figure out how are we going to honor specific adults for what they've contributed to the community. So we're just thinking ahead. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, great, great. Good clarification. <laughs> the, well, first of all, great work, everyone. That's great updates on all of that content. Um, and um, I, as for the library in October, there's, um, it hasn't quite been announced yet about how we will do about when room reservations will be allowed again um and or spaces, i think it's but... i think it starts after december they're not well, doing reservation th that's well that's for a public but th there's talk about allowing city staff um for staff connected events to be able to be able to make reservations sooner than that so um i should i have uh, separate events that are kind of in the queue of wanting to use the library space. So I should have an answer about that soon about whether or not the library would be able to be reserved for an October event. Um, so if it's in the notes there and I can write it down, then I can sort of follow up to see if that's going to work. Otherwise, there's some other community spaces that are allowing for um, this that maybe um, we could toss out some other ideas if that doesn't work out for your. Yeah. For your well, Beth has already said she's putting us on the docket for October 1st from 11 to 1 for H is coming through H Cafe is what she said. So Okay, that's a good update. I but, think that that's a little indication of some, you know, different messaging. So uh, maybe I can also connect with that. Well, we'll see what happens. It, it may not even happen. We may not even be able to meet in person. So anyway, that's what we did at our last H Cafe planning meeting. So anyway, I guess there's a comp, com, who gets the space? <laughs> that's, a, that's great information to know, Martha. We'll yeah. connect those dots and yeah. see what we can find out. So yeah. all that sounds really great, everyone. Um, uh, may yeah. I make a comment? Um, and that is, um, I think the idea of honoring a senior citizen uh, is a great idea, I think that doing that on a regular basis might be extremely um, good for the senior population and might get their interest to become more involved. Is mm -hmm. there any reason that a once that committee gets going that they could not have a senior citizen who is identified and thanked or made uh, public uh, every month in the Beaverton um, newsletter? Is there a reason that we can't do 12 people a year? I know they're out there. There's Great idea, Bev. 
there's some great people. Why do it just, you know, on a once in a while? There's a lot of old people in Beaverton. <laughs> I think we all love the idea. We're the the challenge right now is getting this up and running and really understanding the qualifications of it and the different categories for the awards. But I like how you're you're conceptualizing this on a larger scale. And I think that that really jives with I'm, I saw all of the like subcommittee members nodding. So it's on our radar for every month. And, and I agree with you. Yeah, I, I think that the that population would be looking forward to who is it this month? Do I know them? I mean, it's just a motivation, yeah. you know, yeah, to become like, more involved. The who's who of the senior community. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. The other so thing Karen, is that we'll get our city. Karen, wait a minute, Karen had her hand up. So yeah. Karen- I put the little mechanical hand up. I you, saw that. You didn't see my big one. Anyway, uh, um, <laughs> uh, a couple of questions. I keep missing Age Cafe. How do I find, is it part of Viva Village or is it through the library? It's through the city, right, Carly? BCOA? Age Cafe is the oh, library. Cafe. Say it again. It's the library. library. It should be on the what library. It is the library. Okay. Okay. And the other thing is, I am a freelance calligrapher. I will be happy to calligraph when we get to that point, the award that goes out to people. So write my name down. Gotcha. Last name is two words V A N capital H O Y, two words. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John. What I was going to say is that if we get this into our city, then a lot of the older folks will read our city. Yeah. Here, yeah. Absolutely. And it would be nice to also post events with that. Yeah. These are events that are going on this month. I don't know that they do it every month, though, do they? That Beaverton newsletter, it's every quarter. It's every quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Every and maybe a featured resource. Right. Good idea. Just in, in your city deadline for the September edition is on Friday. So um, so we'd be thinking about if I can perhaps get something in possibly, but thinking about it would be the next. If it doesn't come in by Friday, if we don't have something ready, then it would be, uh, you know, the next edition. Okay. And where do you submit on Friday, Carly? To the city staff that's coordinating the Your City magazine. Oh, okay. Much easier to get other ways of communicating. You know, the, the, the other city forms, the library has their form of communications that they send out to the public. You know, they do social media and their own publications. There's the social media that can get sent out. There's, um, you know, other, there's other forms other than just your city, but um, the your city one comes out every two months. Um, and then there's like this, the city calendar online and a few other things, but um, you know, your city is really nice because it's the printed version, right? That comes. Yeah. And then Beaverton Library has its own calendar online as well as they send out a newsletter, but you have to, I think you have to sign up for it, but I'm not sure because I, can't remember if I get it or I read it somewhere. Anyway, well, good. Anything else to add for go to the order? Sophie. I just wanted to reiterate that um, I'm just kind of piggyback Beverly's comment uh, on having it 12, you know, 12 people a year. I think the meeting today was really rich and awesome. And we're going to come back with some great information. I think that the idea was to nominate and have someone ready in October, so October 1. And then in the discussion today, we talked about maybe having it next year. But to be honest, if we can get people nominated and excited and ready before October, I don't see why we couldn't have someone picked out by October. I think that would be really fun. Um, so there's been just both discussions. And I think that should probably come up to the board decide whether or not we want to start nominating and finding nominations. Um, so that way we can get this rolling before next year's October, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I wanna reiterate that Viva Village's uh, purpose is to get it on the docket as a mm -hmm. 
day to celebrate all seniors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and all of a sudden it gets kind of mushy, but uh, we have to, we have to talk about it. Yeah. Or think about it. Sunita, did you want to yeah, say? Yeah, uh, I think it's a great idea. But before we do nominations, we need to have the qualifications on what basis are we going to nominate them. Yeah. John has his hand up. And John? Uh, yes, the, um, I, I put, well, Carly was talking about uh, Beaverton, city of Beaverton, uh, trying to conserve water at this point. And I put a water efficiency rebate program uh, link up on our chat. But uh, city of Beaverton is giving rebates on new washers and new toilets and uh, a $50 rebate on installing a water sense weather-based irrigation controller. Cool. And if you do not use uh, extra ovens and so forth between the hours of five and eight, you also get a discount on your um, electricity. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, good to know. <laughs> okay, wow, what a great meeting. Great ideas. Martha, we got one more question there from Karen. Oh, but I'm sorry. Um, I've been wanting to be uh, to know about these meetings, and I did, I guess, sign up because Beaverton sent me something. But it, it, it kind of bothers me that most of the people here, bless your little hearts, aren't seniors. Where are all the seniors at this point? I'm a senior. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, yeah, but I would like to see more faces in this meeting. And I'm also interested in being on the board of aging and whatever committee. So keep that in mind. Okay, those, those, that comes up in October, November, Carly? Yeah, you're welcome to submit the application right now, and then the process will start in the fall um, for the BCO for this committee. Um, and then, then it, yeah, I can't, I can't remember what the deadline is off the top of my head, but, um, but, it's, but it is open to put in an application if you want. I also want to say something about being intergenerational because we're all, we all live in the same community and we all are here to help each other out. And um, I know the H Cafe is really, really supportive of intergenerational things. And so are we as a committee in terms of working in our, in our community at large. So that's, that's kind of generational, intergenerational and bye Misty. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that that's really important too, Karen, just to let you know that we work on a, there are a lot of us who are seniors here though. <laughs> well, um, Karen, and I don't think I have your email address, but if you wanna connect with me, then um, I'll also give you the application and send you the link and you can read about the bios of everybody on the committee and things like okay, that. How do, I, how do I get a hold of you? You have a pen? <laughs> yeah, I'll stay on right after we stop recording. Oh, okay. And if you hang tight for just a second. So I'll let Martha finish up the logistics here. Okay. I Yeah, Bev. Hey, how do I get things off of the chat? Because I can't write it, all of that down fast. You know what I do, Bev? I take a picture of it with my camera, with my phone. Oh, Bev, a... Bev, are you wanting the link? I'll yeah, I, I'm... Yeah, I'm just glancing at it, but I wanted to listen to what was being said too. So I, you know, and I thought, well, you, um, one of the things that occurs as you age is you can't multitask as well anymore. Yeah, no, and we try not to use the chat too much, but I think that the only things that were in there were the link that I shared to the trainings, which I'm happy to put into the minute and or an email to you as well as the Beaverton Library. So I'll just include those links to you. Okay, uh, to if the you group. would send me Paul's the link, email address too. What's that? Paul's email address, he sent it to you. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. great to the subcommittee. So yeah, thank Paul's you. On board. Okay, so we can add that um, so you can have that information. Great. Okay, 431, um, who would like to, uh, I always forget the words you use. I so move that the meeting is ended. Thank you, Beth. Do second. I hear a second? I second. Thank you, Sophie. And a vote? All yay. Raise Aye. Hand. Our meeting is officially closed. And Karen, I'm 75. 
I mean, really, I would have been nicer to you if I'd known that. I'm <laughs> I okay. embrace geezerdom. <laughs> So, I still bicycle and scuba dive. So Sophie and Carly, should we meet for just a few minutes or should we plan another meeting to plan the next meeting?